Hello everybody, so I've had a lot of questions about the base under my sawmill and people asking for a video and I figured, hey, what the heck, I like talking about stuff like this, so uh, we'll do a quick video about the sawmill base. Um, the reason I, I elevated the sawmill uh, track is I, all the past work I've done in sawmills have all been on trailer mounted wood misers and I found that the height of a wood miser up on a trailer was very comfortable for working. Uh, it's, it's a good height for offloading logs um, with forks on a tractor and lumber and it's just comfortable you don't have to bend over hardly at all and so that's the reason I wanted to raise this up and so while I was waiting for my mill to ship uh, I got some blueprints that are available on the Woodland Mills uh, website and they have very detailed drawings uh, the dimensions of the track and the mill and I was able to work out the dimensions I would need to build base to support uh, that track. And by the way, this is the standard track that ships with the uh, HM122 Plus uh, one extension. So working with the information um, in the uh, drawings, uh, I was able to work out the dimensions for the base. And I wanted these tracks to be out at around 29, 30 inches. And so I was able to work backwards and figure out how tall the base needed to be. And I sorted through my scrap pile and I had a lot of scrap uh, treated four by six timbers from pole barn projects. A lot of times we have to cut off the top of the post when we're trimming it to height. And so um, I had plenty of scraps of four by sixes for the legs. Uh, the only thing I needed to buy were a few four by sixes for the horizontal members um, in between and um, unfortunately those are real expensive because you know lumber prices have gone crazy recently but uh, I, I didn't want to set up the sawmill temporarily just to saw those horizontal timbers and then have to bust it down and rebuild the track up on the base so I just sucked it up and paid money for those horizontal timbers and then on top of that is a uh, regular uh, untreated um, two by six. Uh, and I wanted to make sure I didn't have any treated lumber up against those metal foot pads because it would cause them to corrode. So that's why that top piece is not treated. For the uh, gussets here, a couple, I don't know, a few months ago or maybe a year ago, I was down at a metal scrap yard and they had a ton of diamond plate and I picked up a whole bunch of that and I've been using that for all kinds of things. And uh, one of the places I've used it here is for these uh, gusset plates um, that are at every joint where a uh, post meets uh, uh, the beam. And then these are lagged into the timbers with, uh, I think those are 5 16 or 3 8 lags, uh, about two inches long. And uh, from both the outside um, and the inside, and uh, uh, it's really when you when you have a joint like this, if you can't notch it, uh, the best thing you can do is to create a wide gusset plate and spread the screws out. Uh, uh, the further apart they are, the the more rigid that's going to be, and so that kind of was the idea here. Then. Uh, Underneath, I just had some scrap 2x12 from a, uh, a set of stairs I built not too long ago. Those are uh, lagged into the posts with some uh, GRK timber screws. Those are great screws. I love those. And then on the ends, I think I had I ran out of 2x12, so I put a 2x8 down there. Uh, and that kind of gives it uh, rigidity and stiffness and bracing uh, in the cross direction. Now, um, to, to put this together, what I did was I pre-assembled the middle section, so that's four legs and two beams. I pre-assembled that in my garage and carried it on site, and I had dug the post holes with a, just a handheld post hole digger. And I basically suspended the, uh, that center section over the holes, let the post dangle down into the holes and I propped it up and staked it in place so that everything was nice and level and then I <clears throat> backfilled 
those post holes with concrete. I let the concrete get underneath the posts, uh, poked at it with rebar to make sure it got under there with no air bubbles or pockets, and then fill up the holes around the posts. And by the way, there are gonna be some photos of the process at the end of this video, and that you'll see how I kind of just propped it up over those holes and, and then poured the concrete in. And once that's set up, then I added the uh, sections on each end, and those were basically just uh, two beams and two posts, and they attached um, at the gusset plates. And then I basically dangled those ends, those posts over their holes, and propped it up and leveled it, and then poured the concrete there, and then did the same thing on the other end. And and that was pretty much it. Um, I, I really think one of the tricks to structures like this is prefab everything you can somewhere level like a nice concrete floor in the garage uh, then carry it out and you know once it's square and nice and rigid you know then you worry about leveling it in your post holes and and then pour the concrete kind of kind of go forward and then work backwards uh, because if you try and start by putting these posts in concrete and then do the structure, you're just gonna be fighting. There's just so many things that'll get in the way of making it square and level. So uh, prefab what you can. And by the way, this is the same technique I use when I build stairs and decks, uh, outdoor stairs and decks. Um, I will actually frame up the, uh, the structure, have the posts just hanging down dangling down in their holes and you know the structure will be temporarily propped up with with other lumber and only then when I've got everything framed and squared and and uh, I'm happy with it only then do I pour concrete around the posts um, it's just a just a good way to do things uh, one other thing I want to mention here is these posts go down in the ground about 17 or 18 inches I wanted to make sure the very bottom was below the frost line and our frost line is supposedly 12 inches uh, I've never seen it deeper than about four inches here in reality but uh, to be safe I wanted to get below that 12 inch um, depth and what that does is if for some reason you know we did get a, a really deep freeze and and the ground froze uh, down down to 12 inches um, it's not going to heave the ground below the posts. That ground should be below that, that frost line. And, and that's really important for a sawmill. I can't tell you how many other reviews and videos I've seen where people uh, talk about having to re-level their track all the time or they know, they know, you know, if they get cold weather, they know it's going to get out of whack because of frost issues. And so uh, I'm thankful to everybody else who figured that one out and and mentioned it ahead of time uh, I was able to incorporate that and make sure those bases were uh, well below the frost line I think that's it for everything I wanted to talk about uh, stick around and now there'll be some photos of the uh, construction process and uh, be sure to ask any questions you have put them in the comments and I'll I'll get right to them thanks for watching